So hi everybody, uh, welcome to TWR Facebook Live, and uh, I am here with Diane uh, Musho Hamilton, mm -hmm. and uh, very happy to be here you. Uh, with happy you, and uh, looking forward for our conversation. So maybe um, I will, maybe if you can please uh, uh, kind of speak a little bit about you introduce yourself and uh, maybe uh, your your new book and that's uh, I'm, I don't want you to hold too long this I will <laughs> do like this you can see the Zen of you and me so I think uh, I definitely uh, uh, people will look forward to hearing a little bit about uh, the kind of summarizing mm -hmm. of your book wonderful mm -hmm. yes yes so I was just uh, just I was telling Rinpoche about my, my relationship to uh, Dharma, talking about how I learned, began to study meditation when I was young at Naropa Institute, mm -hmm. and also when Chogyam Trungpa was still alive, he was my first teacher. Many of you know I went on to train in the Zen tradition, and, but I'm also a mediator, and so I was saying that, um, that in, the, in the mediation world, there's a whole skill set for bringing uh, people into oneness. And in the meditative world, there's a skill set. And my book was really an attempt to kind of cross-fertilize and bring those two different skill sets together sure. in a way. Yeah. Sure. So um, I think in your book, you talk about uh, the people who, how you say, you go under your skin, or people who, mm -hmm. who bother you, yeah. they become a good um, um, reminder or mm -hmm. good uh, support for your practice, Absolutely. right? Can you say a little yeah, bit about that? That's right, sure. So I think uh, each of us has particular people in our life that we have a harder time kind of becoming one with, if you, if you will. It could be um, maybe sometimes it's our spouse or perhaps a parent or maybe the boss that we work for. And um, there's a certain kind of uh, uh, genuine, you might say, a certain kind of generosity in being willing to open yourself to that difficulty. And when we open ourselves to that difficulty, sometimes we discover more depth in ourselves, more capacity mm -hmm. for caring for that which is different than we are. Mm -hmm. And so how do we include that which is really different? That's mm -hmm. the question. Mm -hmm. It's easy when we feel the same. Sure, sure. <laughs> <laughs> it feels good. But when it's really different, sometimes that difference, uh, at first it might be exciting, but then it becomes threatening and sometimes it's fatiguing to constantly feel the difference. Mm -hmm. so. Yeah, so we were talking a little bit earlier, I was asking Dan about that um, being part of training in Zen, mm -hmm. teaching meditation, but also as a profession, uh, being a mediator, so how does these th two, right things, do two things go together? And um, so you were saying, I think, um, that there's no different. I think I completely mm -hmm. agree with you. So maybe you can say a little bit about that, that in every day in situation in our life, we have to work with our body, we have to work with mm -hmm. our speech, we work with our mind, we have to work with uh, people, and particularly we have to work with the challenging people. So if you, you can... Uh, deny or ignore or fight or you have a little better way to work with them and that working with them becomes definitely part of your practice and uh, yeah, right so maybe yeah. you m might want to kind talk of about argue. that a little bit yeah so um so when we we sit down uh to meditate lots of times our our body is not necessarily still or we may not notice the stillness and as we settle into the posture and we allow ourselves to come to the present and to ground in the moment then we start to notice the stillness uh, the same is true in our speech it might be pressured or we might be hurrying or lots of different ideas in what we're communicating but when we quiet down we can start to feel the silence and the open space of that the open space in the mind and if you just take that one step further and you say that when I'm now in the world, I'm not just simply on my cushion, but I'm working with other people, in a, in a certain way it's the, it's the same phenomenon. I have the opportunity to feel the stillness in a group with people. Mm -hmm. Also the silence or the openness in my own speech and the spaciousness of mind that could include even the fact that maybe we disagree with each other. 
So even though I feel a difference, I can also feel the way in which we're the same. And so part of what I'm trying to work with is to help people really cultivate this sense of uh, sameness, or maybe oneness, you mm -hmm. could say, mm -hmm. and then notice how difference arises. And what we learned from integral theory is we learned that uh, our truest nature is, is one, but that the, the universe evolves through integrating difference. So one way that Ken Wilber talks about this is that quarks appear as this fundamental material and they kind of hang out together and they're the same and then out of that sameness pops atoms mm -hmm. and atoms are different. Mm -hmm. And then atoms hang together and they're the same and then boom, suddenly we have molecules. Mm -hmm. And that the universe actually is evolving itself through this very, very deep coherence mm -hmm. and then the emergence of something new or novel that's different. Mm -hmm. And so that's true in our lives. When something new or novel emerges, sometimes it's exciting, but sometimes it's threatening. Mm -hmm. And if we can learn how to expand to include both the novelty, but also the threat, we have a chance to grow and change. Mm -hmm. And we don't grow and change when our world is too much the same. Mm -hmm. The status quo gets very uh, stagnant sometimes. Mm -hmm. So difference is really our way of expanding. Yeah. You, you came from India, you lived in a monastery, yeah. you emerged from the monastery, you came into a very different culture, yeah. and you've grown a whole different set of skills. Sure. His Holiness Dalai Lama talks about in, in a garden, in a flower, if there's only one kind of flower, it's not much fun. Not the beauty. <laughs> That's right. There have got to be yeah. many different flowers. Yeah. So uh, one question, people, like people who go through like a war situations, right? Mm -hmm. So war situations and they get abused and, mm -hmm. uh, you know, and lost country, lost family, lost mm -hmm. their beliefs. And, uh, and then afterward, then there's some sense of peace. It's, mm -hmm the war becomes kind of history. Mm -hmm. But when you look back, how people have treated you, mm -hmm. and all those, how you f work with the forgiveness for those people, it's mm -hmm. kind of very, very difficult when you look back what happened. Mm -hmm. It's not easy to process them, right? No, and no, in the no. same way, uh, also if you look at in the, uh, many situations where mm -hmm. adults, when they grow up mm -hmm. in their 40s and 50s and 60s, then they look back, mm -hmm. the situations where in the family there is a lot of mm -hmm. abuse and history, not in the present but the past. Mm -hmm. But the past abuse, either in a situation in the war, in the family, mm -hmm. and uh, how do you, if there are a lot, a lot of people like that, mm -hmm. I think that uh, they're kind of struggling a lot how to work with those. Yes. Can you maybe say something? Yes, yeah. absolutely. Um, I think you might be able to say something more about what it's like to to be to lose your culture or to be forced to grow up in a different culture and and when there's abuses still to this day happening. You know, you probably know how to work with that more than I do. <laughs> I can say some things. But. Yeah, I think I will ask you to say first. <laughs> Well, I think um, I think the this the the depth and the beauty of the Buddhist tradition teaches us that our true nature is ever present and it's not based on conditions. Mm -hmm. But the trauma that we experience through violence and and uh, through war, as you mentioned, is very real in the body, and the relationship of trauma in the body to the mind is a very real one. And so what we're discovering about the work with trauma now is that uh, we have to almost have what we would call like a yogic practice where we have to release some of the deep traumatic patterns in the body. Mm -hmm. And when we uh, start to release those patterns, the mind is then freed to let go. Mm -hmm. uh, and then we're able to let go and, and really feel the, the abundance of the here and now mm -hmm. and the freedom from all that negativity. Mm -hmm. However, those patterns are very strong, as we know, sure. and sometimes they're they they're they're complicated. When you know you, for instance, if you come from an, an abusive background, you may do your own work and feel really resilient and liberated, and then you enter your family system, mm -hmm. and suddenly the patterns recur, and you feel like you've lost all progress. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think um, um, just somehow. Like uh, it seems like uh, that people who are 
you know, have more challenges in those situations because somehow their, first of all, I think their sense of themselves mm -hmm. is not very strong, I guess, you know, mm -hmm. like not very connected mm -hmm. in their true self, mm -hmm. true being. Mm -hmm. Deep connectedness is not there. And then um, when all this in history, all this situation happens, mm -hmm. and then it kind of makes things worse mm -hmm. and then re they really get disconnected mm -hmm. and then so the whole afterward it seems like everything is about how to reconnect right. with connection was not there and then it made it worse mm -hmm. so how to reconnect back is I think it seems like a very very uh, challenging if I think in some sense like His Holiness Dalai Lama talks about in Tibetan situation uh, I think people kind of lost everything mm -hmm. But if just his only Dalai Lama is, I think, a good example of mm -hmm. it. Then, mm -hmm. you know, if you look at some of these very old photos or footages or something like this, mm -hmm. just right after it comes out of Tibet, you know, it's just smiling, you know, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> as if it's, you know, it's just coming out of some nice mm -hmm. place or something like mm -hmm. that. So, so some sense of um, um, Connection to oneself, I think this is. I I feel like people find it very very difficult to reconnecting, mm -hmm. you know, somehow, mm -hmm. um, and also the situation with the family. Uh, some cases that I know that people really like uh, forgiveness to that person, what they did. It just seems like almost impossible. So uh, for them, it seems very difficult. Uh, Mm -hmm. So, what would be your advice? I mean, so like, <laughs> it's so funny you ask me this question yeah. because I um, I have a younger brother, mm -hmm. and my brother died um, about uh, a week ago, mm -hmm. and uh, my brother was a very charismatic and um, beautiful and very intense person, but he had very strong emotions, and sometimes they were negative. And when I went to his home after he died. He left me a nasty note. <laughs> he told me that I wasn't a very good Buddhist, and I was so judgmental. And I really had my, it hurt my feelings. Uh -huh. Yeah, so I found myself in the few days after he died, I was, I was hurt and I was mad that he would say that to me. And uh, now, you know, obviously I've, I've trained for such a long time, I, sure. I'm not committed at all to my anger, sure. but I just, I noticed I distanced from the sure. loss and mm -hmm. I distanced from him mm -hmm. and um, so I think for me I learned when when uh, early early on with in my work with Chogyam Trungpa he talked a lot about the transmutation of emotion mm -hmm. and being willing to include it mm -hmm. to feel the energy of it and the intelligence of the emotion like what's actually right about it why was it okay for me to be mad and that when I include that, that what I really feel is a lot of care mm -hmm. and a real desire to be close to my mm -hmm. brother. And that's what's truly underneath the anger. Mm -hmm. And then I feel my heart open. Sure. And then I feel my loss more directly. Wonderful, wonderful. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so I've been practicing. Wonderful. Yeah, I, I, I guess, you know, like usually what we're trying to tell people is again, yes, you're talking that, you know, when, when you look at those moments when you remember the person, what person did, what person said to me. <laughs> to me? <laughs> you wrote me that note? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, me, a naughty note? Yeah, so it's like when you, when, 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 when that happens, we, I usually kind I'm of such tell. such a good person. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so I usually, it's, it's like, a, rather than trying to think positively or trying to change your thoughts, uh, what usually what I try to tell is just as you know, just for a moment, bring your change, trying to change your attention mm -hmm. from that person, that energy, that story that to yeah there. to your body to in here to yeah. to in here to mm -hmm. your body. Just just kind of mm -hmm. just kind of being aware of your body because your body is there to kind of support you. And when you bring your attention to your body, and then it's just immediately you or your mind kind of feels that little taste of the stillness, mm -hmm. and then uh, mm -hmm. then then the mind 
began to talk a little bit, oh, you're feeling the stillness, but things are not still changing, you know. <laughs> That's right. They're still, whatever they did, they said, they did, they're, you know. But then you hear that the voice. Okay yeah, with me. yeah that the voice. Okay. <laughs> so the voices are still there. Then you said, okay, you just allow them. And you just, beyond that voice, you hear there is a presence of silence. Mm -hmm. And you kind of feel that, and have a have little connection, then there is some sense of a presence of in, the, in the mind, in your heart, mm -hmm. and just kind of resting in there. So usually what we, we talk about three doors, mm -hmm. and, and uh, then through that, kind of slowly able to feel more space, mm. right? Mm -hmm. So a little bit kind of, just kind of energetically kind of opens up a little bit more space, a little bit more than before. And uh, so that moment, I think uh, for most of the people, they begin to see the other person, different person, mm -hmm. basically, you know, not the mm -hmm. same person, mm -hmm. um, not a mean person, but the person maybe who who needed to say that or who mm -hmm. needed to it's a part of the journey or something like mm -hmm. that. So you uh, because I think one time I had this beautiful experience with a student of mine, and uh, during the middle of the meditation she cried and mm -hmm. and she said, "Now uh, I'm so excited to go back home, oh. my country, go back home and meet my." father mm. and I love him mm. and uh, until now I was always angry at him oh, wow. always angry at him mm. because uh, kind of seeing always things what he did not do he, what mm -hmm. he should have done and his absence and everything you know mm. so I think so somehow by being connected it seems like kind of opened up and mm. able to see different person mm -hmm. you know so I think that definitely um, helped a lot. But it's, a, it's an important step that you're describing where we're looking outward at it or him mm -hmm. and then when the strong feeling arises to turn the light inward mm -hmm. and to go into my own experience and really, well what is it that's happening for me right now? In the body as mm -hmm. you said, noticing the speech mm -hmm. and the silence and then experiencing what's going on in the mind letting the mind become more spacious, mm -hmm. letting that solid contraction, that conviction that something wrong and bad has happened, mm -hmm. just letting that dissolve a little bit. Mm -hmm. And then you can feel the heart mm -hmm. open. There's a softening towards my brother. Yeah, so some brother. sense of little, the whole change of attention inward already mm -hmm. seems like a, regardless of yeah. how successful, right? That's yeah. just out to in already seems like a That's big. big change already yes. for some, for some people they mm -hmm. probably some people i mean i don't know how many in the particular t typical situation in the business world how many you feel like that that is shift is a really big shift for some people probably yeah. they never do right yeah. yeah yeah sometimes it happens spontaneously yeah. and then you can help people notice that 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 suddenly they're not looking out but they're they seem to be in relationship with themselves and so it's a little bit more after the fact, like pointing out that that shift has changed and helping mm -hmm. them notice it. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. Yeah. So maybe you know, maybe you can say a little bit more about your book mm -hmm. and the, the maybe let's say the Zen mm -hmm. and the conflict resolution resolution kind mm -hmm. of this mm -hmm. the the process and uh, how. I would I would imagine you know that I was telling you the story about I was um, invited down to talk about conflict resolution that's not my field but I can but I said okay well this dharma dharma teaching is mm -hmm. about that it right is, so yeah, yeah. so I was thinking how does that work so I just came down to really as always to come down to this sense of view mm -hmm. like it's it's your view right mm -hmm. so so if you can you say a little bit about uh, Zen's view or mm -hmm. Buddhist view. Mm -hmm. uh, shaping the uh, how you resolve the conflict. You know? Yeah, mm -hmm. absolutely. Mm -hmm. So um, the first thing I think is that when we've uh, the Buddha, Buddhist view would be to to see how um, unifying conflict is, like it's very intimate. 
when I'm when I'm upset with someone, I'm very much involved with them. I'm not. I mean, there may be some quality of separateness, but the conflict itself is like it, there's something that's binding us together, mm -hmm. and that's interesting. And to feel the kind of oneness under that, and that it's being expressed, the intimacy is being expressed in a certain way. And how can I work with the energetics of that so that that underlying togetherness can transform to harmony? There's a quote right at the beginning of my book in the first chapter where Master Mumon says, the mind of nirvana is easy to accomplish. It's the mind of difference that's difficult to attain. Sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Wow, beautiful. Mm -hmm. Yeah, really beautiful. And so what I notice is that um, in the work, people are identified with the difference and the separation, but they're not identified, and identified with the underlying togetherness, you mm. might say, of conflict. And so I try to to bring that as a mediator, I try to bring that recognition that we're together in this. And how is it that we can transform it from a negative expression of our togetherness into a positive expression? Mm, wonderful. Yeah. yeah. So maybe, you know, like I was just thinking that um, generally, like in terms of resol uh, resolving conflict and issues mm -hmm. in the world mm -hmm. between countries, religions. Yeah, it's big. Big time. Mm -hmm. um, of course, we can, from Dharma point of view, we can always talk about this view, uh, as you were saying, we can talk about it. But then also sometimes it feels like uh, even uh, big spiritual leaders, um, uh, big politicians, big, big people, people with personalities, sometimes it seems like also that it's not about, of course it's always about the wisdom, being very open, but it's also sometimes it's not about uh, before you get to that openness, but it's also about recognition of personality, you know, mm -hmm. like I think totally. where yeah. it seems like um, in our culture, like mm -hmm. as an Asian culture, but in the particular as a Tibetan culture, even even, even in, in uh, among teachers and some, mm -hmm. sometimes I always see there is such a, a weakness of ability to um, uh, recognize the personality, you know, mm -hmm. if I recognize the pain, mm -hmm. you know, if I feel, mm -hmm. uh, I can talk about being openness mm -hmm. and everything and everything and everything, when the, as in the teaching it says oh, we're always, <laughs> right. right? We can repeat those things, yeah. but if something is really bothering me, yeah. I, and another person is bothering me, mm -hmm. then ability to come forward, mm -hmm. this, uh, not only uh, you know, of course, you are you're feeling it, but the ability to come forward mm -hmm. with that person, saying, mm -hmm. you know, uh, rather than stop communicating, mm -hmm. and then every now and then, then you have opportunities saying negative things, mm -hmm. negative comments, but able to come forward, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. communicate, mm -hmm. not criticize, right. but communicate what what I'm feeling. Mm -hmm. I think. I, you know, I always do, I feel I feel like when somebody says I I did did something or said something that made somebody feel uncomfortable, mm -hmm. sad. If I hear that I mm -hmm. caused somebody's sadness, I definitely will say no. I'm not going to do that. <laughs> totally. I'm so sorry, right? <laughs> but if bit... somebody says you are wrong, yes. what you did yes. caused me pain. Yes. Then you are wrong yes. was not a good start. Yes. That's, it's not but, a good way to begin. Not a good way to begin. No. So I think there are some certain issues also, like uh, mm -hmm. in in the in the spiritual communities. Totally. Everybody's supposed to be nice. How you can talk Peaceful, negative things, calm, right? Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So can you? <laughs> yeah, sure, sure. Well, I think as I said before, we have to really come to recognize that our body feels really different when we're in a conflict. And all of those chemicals, adrenaline or cortisol, those are telling us basically to fight or to, what, what is it, fight, flight, or freeze, right? So we have these patterns in conflict where we're aggressive, like mm -hmm. me, I'm mm -hmm. aggressive when I'm upset. Mm -hmm. Some people withdraw, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And some people get very accommodating, they just try to smooth it out. Renounce, transform, or liberate. Yes, exactly, <laughs> yes. Yeah. So we have, to, we have to notice our pattern and um, it, takes, it takes a certain kind of skill set. You have to have practiced because the defensive system in the body uh, substantiates the ego, right? It's all about me protecting myself. It's, it's millions of years of evolution. My sure. brain, my nervous system, sure. fight or flight, 
my ego is going to completely consolidate. Sure. So it's a counterintuitive thing to take a breath, mm -hmm. to relax the body, mm -hmm. and instead of coming in with a, a, a kind of aggressive or criticism, to sort of just be able to say, I'm noticing that I feel separate from you. Mm -hmm. Or I'm noticing that I have an idea about your differences that are causing me difficulty. How is it? How are you doing? Mm -hmm. Like to to be able to do that, sure. that takes a lot of practice. Sure. Just even that much. Sure. And then if I open to you and I say, "How do you see it?" Mm -hmm. Then for me to be able to calm myself and really receive your perspective, mm -hmm. because it might be conflicting with mine. And if our perspectives conflict, usually I'll drive out one of them because sure. it's too hard to hold two truths. Sure. But with practice, I can realize that my perspective is true and partial, sure. and so is yours. Sure. And so then we practice together, and then pretty soon we get interested in these moments sure. instead of afraid of them. Sure, absolutely. Right? Yeah, personally for me, I, I feel like sometimes, because as a practitioner, mm -hmm. so I, I feel like uh, as a cultural, we, don't, we have lack of a little bit sense of mm -hmm. addressing um, feelings and mm -hmm. personalities, you know, like so. Mm -hmm. And then when you, and the motivation for me is very much when I tell myself, okay, well, if you're not going to change your personality, there's no practice then. I mean, what, what does practice mean, right? Mm -hmm. What does meditation mean? Mm -hmm. Basically, meditation only means that able to recognize your personality mm -hmm. when the personality is manifesting yes right yes. that i mean that's a great opportunity i mean yes. this is not a threat yes. that's a great opportunity because when it is it's right there how you can avoid it yes. not, not to right. see it but seeing it mm -hmm. is the door mm -hmm. to your liberation yes. seeing is the door of your transformation that's because right. if you avoid that mm -hmm. then you lost the opportunity mm -hmm. because then when that is gone Next time you're trying to meditate without without that, you're you're kind of making up stories. Mm -hmm. There's no story there. Mm -hmm. You know, you're like, okay, you know, peaceful. Okay, it's easy to just say peaceful when nobody's bothering you. Mind of Nirvana is yeah. easy to achieve. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So that moment, it's I think it's such a uh, I, I, you know difficult, but such a great door. I mean, opportunity, true opportunity, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, because that. Um, that is where we say self, self is there. Self is clearly manifesting, and if you don't recognize that, mm -hmm. then you you really l l l lost kind of great opportunity. You know? mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think so. Mm. I think so. So maybe uh, you wanted to uh, show the book again, so people who those who are kind of uh, coming up here maybe can look at the book again. Uh, let me see. Me. Thank you for reading it and for having me on the podcast. I yeah, appreciate. no, that's. We're very, very happy to do that. Can you come a little closer? Yeah. I think maybe you might want to say a little bit more. I think you're, you're very short with the book. <laughs> yeah, let's, let's see it. Yeah, yeah. 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 Just maybe read so, a few lines. Yeah, sure. I'll, I can read a couple of lines. So, yeah, I'll just uh, read the first couple of pages to you. Yeah, this please. is a, a workshop that I did in Germany. Mm -hmm. And again, this is a, the first chapter is called Same and Different. Now you can see my living room, you know, that I did not meant to show that. We <laughs> had tea there just to yeah. us a bit. Yeah. Okay, yeah. yeah. Okay, great. So this is called Same and Different, and I'm interested in this notion of unity or sameness, mm -hmm. and then also how we grow through integrating difference, and, and the brain evolves that way as well. So the mind of nirvana is easy to achieve, it's the mind of difference that's difficult to attain. And that's by Zen Master Mumon. I was facilitating a workshop in Germany when an elegant woman, born in Africa and raised in Switzerland, began to share her story. She told the group of how her family fled to Europe when political instability overtook her country. She was only six years old when they left everything, braving their way north as homeless refugees. She had retained nothing from her early life, not even a memory. Everything was stripped. She started her life over in a completely strange land. As a young girl, she was aware that she was different from the Swiss. Her language, her style of dress, and the color of her skin set her apart. She sensed instinctively that her differences were dangerous, and without being told, she strove to fit in. She felt especially vulnerable when other Africans drew attention to themselves 
or behaved in ways that were not acceptable in Swiss culture. She wished that they understood, like she did, that it was their obligation to fit in, to blend in. She worked hard at finding her place in a foreign culture, and most importantly, she learned to dwell in what she called the universal, that aspect of human experience beyond differences, beyond skin color, nationality, and social status, beyond relative conditions altogether. In Zen, we would call this true nature or original face, maybe a natural mind. Mm -hmm. uh, her recognition of her true nature was obvious. She was a stunning presence and she was poignant beyond her words. Everyone in the room felt moved when she spoke. Our true home is our spiritual nature, a place of safety and ultimate equality. From this original source, we have so much in common. We are all born into a great mystery. We breathe the same air, we feel the warmth of the same sun on our skin, and we look up at the same moon and stars at night. We strive to be happy in our own misguided ways, and we all experience challenges, suffering, and moments of despair. It has been said that the tears of the red, the yellow, the black, the brown, and the white men are all the same. And in time, we will all die. As humans, we may reside deeply together in this original being, but we're also exceptional, exceptional in our ability to cooperate. The famous sociobiologist and Harvard professor E.O. Wilson says that human beings are one of the most convivial species on the planet. He says that we are like ants and termites and bees. We, we build mega cities where 10, 15, or 20 million people live together. That's a highly, highly cooperative thing. This is astounding. These are our, our, our own massive hills and hives, and we go about our business with every bit the same determination and cooperation as these insects. Sometimes we get focused on how much we conflict, but we have an extraordinary ability to live and work together, and we thrive in that way as a species. Another profound commonality we share is our family and our culture. Families are a haven of intimacy and protection, as well as suffering or pain. Their shared history, values, and activity are woven tightly together with our DNA. Culture creates another tight boundary of sameness around us. We associate with people who look like us, who talk like we do, who dress the same, and who share our worldview. The sameness feels good, and it feels safe. We can relax with people and we erase the lines between us. We relish harmony like this in our social circles. It feels really good to be reflected by people who, who think like us, who do the same things we do, but we don't tend to grow as much. Mm -hmm. They say that in our evolutionary past, we, uh, that difference often equaled threat but when we were the same, that togetherness ensured our safety and survival. Mm. So we're very sensitive to sameness and difference. Sure, so that when, when there's something that's different, mm -hmm. it more, becomes more like a threat. Mm -hmm. When you feel the same, mm -hmm. you feel ease and safe. You know? Yeah, mm -hmm. precisely. Yeah. And, and uh, in human development, what happens is there comes a point where people get to a place where they start to be more curious about difference um, and they don't have the same threat response in the body. Uh -huh. So that starts to change. So I'll just read just a little bit more. Sure. So in the German workshop, we were exploring these forms of commonality through meditation, listening, and open communication. And then we switched to talking about differences, which is much, much more difficult. We braved a conversation about the refugee crisis in Europe. And it was this conversation that prom prompted the woman from Switzerland to speak. After telling us about her family's journey and the tremendous effort she made to blend in, she went on to say that the conversation we had in Switzerland was the first time she had ever spoken her differences out loud. Oh. Yeah, it was really startling. The challenges of being African in Europe, of being black where most people are white, of having little money in a country of enormous wealth. It was a mind-stopping moment, and it was hard for me to accept that she would feel so limited to speak up in a democratic culture like Switzerland. Oh. Her silence, however, was probably not due to the differences, but to the value judgments, judgments that are placed on those differences. So it isn't simply that our skin is dark or light. 
It's that one is considered better than the other. Mm. With the value difference of better or worse comes an array of advantages and disadvantages. The disadvantages lead to injustice, and that injustice hardens into oppression. And so there comes a point when we can no longer simply talk about our differences because we have to talk about our history, our shared, our emotional distress, the, judge, the judgments we've mm -hmm. experienced, and that conversation is much harder. Yeah. It's a harder one to have. And so we tend to avoid this, and like our Swiss friend, we just try to get along. Mm -hmm. But it limits our ability to grow. Yeah, so it was just, I was saying earlier that in some sense of, uh, that whatever the differences is, that people are not able to talk uh, more from open place, more freely, mm -hmm. and feeling some sense of safe. Mm -hmm able to share and talk, kind of basically releasing that energy, yeah, right? So that yeah. some sense of able to, mm -hmm. that I think, uh, I mean like, not only some sometimes like ordinary people, but I think it seems like a, I see this from every, <laughs> every level and mm -hmm. levels where people are supposed to kind of really uh, able, to. able to and mm -hmm. they still fell. They always fell, I mean, they always fell when it comes to themselves, mm -hmm. and when it comes to their personality, their yeah, personality. That's right. Not, not, not when they are calm, right? I mean, mm -hmm. we are. You're calm. Mm -hmm. You can talk about anything, but when you're threat, mm -hmm. when you're feeling oh my gosh, challenged, right? right? So yeah. that moment, and the body is getting yeah. That triggered. moment, in 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 a way, I think that those moments is not so much about you. You have to look outward and say something or do something, but just simply look inward and feel what you're feeling. Mm -hmm. uh, Ability to do that, I think even mm -hmm. that itself is a great gift. But Tremendous. sometimes we, we, we just, just, mm -hmm. just when it comes to oneself, we just cannot do it. <laughs> it's very difficult. <laughs> right. It really takes so, a lot of time. So, anyway, so maybe if you wanted to, maybe five minutes, just mm -hmm. maybe a little guide, a little a meditation for, I think people would like to. Okay, sure. Like, I'd be happy just to do that. To, yeah. So, um, particularly in the sense of what everybody who is some sense. Uh, mm -hmm feeling like a, a conflict with anybody, their history, their past, with mm -hmm. the present, with somebody, how would they work that, to clear that, and also uh, clearing that conflict with somebody is not just clearing conflict with somebody, but that also they are, you are doing your Dharma practice, you are doing your spiritual practice, you are doing your uh, developing your, you know, insights by doing that, right? So mm -hmm. I think maybe just maybe a little bit. Okay, great. Yeah. yeah, I'd like to do that. So what I'm going to do, everybody, is I will um, lead us in uh, this practice, and I'll include some of what Rinpoche has pointed to, and I will also, it'll be an adapted kind of Tonglin practice, only using developmental levels. We'll try it that way and see how that works. So, what I'd like you to do is find a comfortable sitting posture uh, and uh, we'll use Rinpoche's instruction uh, to simply connect, first of all, to stillness in the body. Allow your attention for a moment to move just to the, the inhalation and the exhalation of the breath. And also uh, the silence in speech right now. I'm going to invite you now to connect to the open space of mind.
and just feel for a moment into the boundlessness of who you really are, the spaciousness. And for a moment, I'm going to invite your identity. And I'd like you just to identify for a moment as the egocentric self. And feel the boundary around the body. And just the limit that you notice when you identify as the small self or as the egocentric self. And notice the person who is outside of you, the person that you're struggling with. And just feel for a moment, if you will, just feel the tension of the struggle. There might be a, a quality of pain or of hurt. And I'm just going to invite you to allow whatever emotional texture is there to simply be there. not to judge or to try to move it away, but to simply recognize and acknowledge that for this moment anyway, there's a conflict and that conflict is fine. It just simply is what it is. And nothing really needs to change right now except for your acknowledgement of the difference between you and the other person. could feel uncomfortable, but just your willingness to let it be as it is right now. And now what I'd like to do is to invite you to identify as the ethnocentric self. So you're just going to allow your boundary to get bigger so that now my identity, your identity, includes everyone like me, my family, my friends, my fellow practitioners, and feel the boundary around us and notice the people for a moment who aren't like us. I might notice that I'm, I'm a Democrat or I voted for Hillary Clinton and maybe the people not like us or not like me are Trump voters. And I'm just going to let that boundary be there. I'm not going to try to change it. Just simply let it be there and let it be what it is. So I have an egocentric self identity and I have an ethnocentric identity. As I'm sitting here with Rinpoche, I might notice that he's Tibetan and I'm American. And even though we're the same, there's a way that we're different. And I'm simply going to let that difference be what it is. Just acknowledging, feeling the tension or the difference, but letting it just be what it is. Now, I'm going, going to invite you to identify as the world-centric self. And notice everything that's on the inside now of this boundary. All humanity is on the inside of my boundary now. Other species are now on the inside of this boundary. What is it that's on the outside as the world-centric self? Is it our problems? 
Is it the climate change? Is it economic disparity? What is on the inside of the world-centric self and what is on the outside? And just again, notice the boundary and let it be what it is. Don't try to change it. So these nested identities of egocentric, of ethnocentric, of world-centric. And now I'm going to invite your identity to get even larger. And this time I'd like you to identify as the cosmic-centric self. And as you identify as the cosmic-centric self, notice how big you are. And as the cosmic-centric self, can you see that is there a boundary? Can you find a boundary or a limit? And perhaps notice that there is no other, there's no boundary that is separate from you. Notice in this open space of identity that there's room for the problems of humanity. There's room for the people not like us. And there's also room for the struggles that we have with others who are different. And notice how by simply including all of it within my identity, the very nature of the conflict changes almost effortlessly. And I like it in when Rinpoche leads a meditation to point you to a quality of warmth, openness, warmth, and inclusiveness, that there's a place for everything. So whatever struggle or challenge you have with another person or with people who are different than you are or with just the challenges of being human, that there's space, awareness, and an open heart, which is really sufficient. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So thank you, everybody. Um, just uh, before we uh, finish today, I just want to thank you very much for coming here and talking to uh, the Facebook audience there. I'm, I'm sure everybody is very happy there. Uh, Mariela is uh, going to post, uh, I think, uh, your book there and uh, that's that's uh, Mariela there okay. and uh, she will post your f uh, Facebook I said the website I think your website all the information will be there so to, to know more and uh, so this Saturday we are starting uh, through Glidewing uh, we are starting this uh, a free online uh, workshop uh, with the Shinne, the Calm Abiding Meditation. And I think uh, 
probably it seems like we have over 400 people have registered, signed up. So, so anybody who don't know about it, I think uh, they're going to post the the Glidewing website there and uh, welcome to uh, register and and to join. This is all free, and uh, so and also um, the information about the next. Uh, uh, Facebook Live. Well, we are talk. We will be talking about the sleep yoga for a couple of weeks, mm -hmm. and uh, so also uh, all free. Please uh, join everybody and let everybody else know. So the informations are. Uh, I think uh, the Mariella is going to post there. So thank you, everybody. Goodbye. Bye, everyone. Bye. Thank you. Bye.